I was thinking about what the worst job in America would be, and at first I thought it was the ticket puncher at movie theaters because you have to be severely handicapped. I like the idea that when you apply for a job as a ticket puncher, you go in totally normal, but then as soon as they're like, can you start today, your legs and brain just give up. And right on cue, one of the managers rolls a wheelchair up behind you to catch you before you fall. Then they wheel you out to your little podium thing, and that's just where you live now. I think when the theater closes, the ticket puncher doesn't go anywhere. They just sit there in the dark until they fall asleep and wake up when it's time to open again. So anyway, ticket punching is a pretty bad job to have because it does come with total retardation, medical term. But I think something that's even worse is being one of those people who write articles about celebrity selfies on Instagram. Every time a C-lister shows off her stretch marks or a B-lister takes a pregnant nude like a freak of nature, you best believe the rising star journalist of Yahoo News is on it like cellulite on a brave 40-year-old celebrity ass. If I wanted to see celebrity selfies, I would follow them on Instagram. They're already celebrities. They don't need you as their volunteer promo and whatever. You're just the foot soldier who gets their mission handed to them. Imagine being the editor-in-chief of Bullshit Magazine who gathers everyone together in a meeting like, Jasmine, paparazzi stalked Blake Lively and her kids for hours and got some nasty shots. You're on it. Suzanne, Britney Spears is topless again and the world needs to know. You're on it. Jessica, Jennifer Aniston is sparking dating rumors again by being with a hundred feet of a man, I want 500 words on my desk before lunch. If you had any dignity, those words would be, I quit, written 250 times. I'm not a fan of journalists. This is a separate topic because the people we were just talking about are most assuredly not journalists. Journalists, reporters, news media interviewers, I just don't vibe with it. Their job is to be fake and annoying, even under their best intentions. Like, even if they're trying to get a scoop on some corrupt shit and what they're doing would be objectively good for the public, they still have to be fake and annoying to even get the story. Whether they're hounding people associated with the corruption, harassing them, using them, promising them things and not delivering, lying about being off the record. If I was a corrupt corporation or individual, I'd fucking hate that shit. But even if I was an innocent corporation or individual, I'd hate it because of how easily those tactics can be levied at people who are even just suspected of something, or people just draw a singular journalist's ire and become their personal vendetta. A journalist wields the power of public opinion for better or worse. They can distort a story, manipulate, deceptively edit, take quotes out of context, or they can call you up for an interview under a friendly guise, conduct said interview seemingly cordially in a comfortable atmosphere, and turn around and write a fucking hit piece when you least expect it. This is certainly rampant whenever the subject of a story has any political ties whatsoever. The person will ask him a question, get an answer, and be like, Ah, good answer. The viewers will see half of it and will be sure to misrepresent the rest. I've been traumatized seeing behind the looking glass when it comes to deceptively edited interviews. I talked about it a long time ago with the Jim Jeffrey show. Nobody should ever agree to do interviews of any kind on syndicated television unless they're going to cut off a two-hour block of time and just let the camera roll live with no interruptions. I think I saw that statistically something like 36% of the country trusts the news media to tell them the truth or do unbiased reporting. I hear 36%. I go, wow, that number is absurdly high. Over a third of America believes any of the shit on CNN or Fox News or MSNBC or listens attentively to Pat Robertson's ghost on the 700 Club. What a kind, innocent world you must live in to still have hope that what you're being told hasn't been spun six ways from Sunday to manipulate you in defeating some outrage machine or blind you to injustice. Our media is like the opposite of North Korea's. The propaganda plugging their airwaves is always happy and good. Like, yay us, we live in a great country run by our fearless god-king leader. Another great day for the regime. Meanwhile, their people are eating rats and bugs to avoid starving to death and don't even know they're oppressed because they have no concept of what that even means. Which is true oppression, by the way. North Korean media airs positive propaganda to distract from all the bad shit going on in the country, while our media airs negative propaganda to distract from all the good shit going on in ours. When's the last time you saw wall-to-wall -wall coverage of something happening that was good? If it's not a shooting, or a trial they can take sides in, or an election they can take sides in, it will never be an ongoing story. Sensationalist journalism is a plague worse than COVID. Where's the vaccine for that shit? I'll even take the boosters. Sharp pivot, but I have a relatively major announcement to make. After years of struggling with the ramifications of my current lifestyle, I am now choosing to identify as a woman. 
Now you may be asking, Sunburned Albino, are you saying this just so you can now technically be a commodity on the lesbian marketplace? And the answer is yes. No longer will lesbians have to question their odd attraction to me as the man that I was, but as the woman I am. I will be undergoing no surgery or changing my appearance or behavior in any way, but deep in my brain will remain a symbolic identification that shines a beacon of comfort to all girls who like girls, including me, because I'm a girl now. But only as far as lesbians are concerned. To the rest of you, I'm a dude. You know what? Yeah, I'm making that distinction, which I'm allowed to do because it's how I feel. And this isn't a knock against trans people. It's not even related. I'm not saying I'm transgender. I'm saying I'm a male lesbian. A mesbian, if you will. A man that lesbians can lust after without questioning themselves. So yay, good for me. I have successfully come out to all of you. I was worried about how you'd take it, but I'm relieved to hear that 100% of you have uh, accepted me with open arms and have made me trend on Twitter. Thank you. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch for streaming, and I'll see you guys next time.